Hey guys, this is Jakob, or known as the Dado, the leader of the EU BW fan club of Panigera. Today I'm here with Guido Stecker, our guitarist, <laughs> and we're going to talk a bit about gear. This, in this video about guitars, uh, especially the collection, what guitars he has, what they are made of. So I see you're already holding one. Yeah, um, this is the so-called Fire and Soul Stratocaster. It was built after the Fire and Soul album, after we finished the recordings. So, and that has this phoenix from the cover already. It was carved in here, it was already torn out. Um, this is the one, um, a big fender neck and scallop. I scalloped it by myself, so maybe you can see it here. Yeah, it's been, the frets are carved out. Mm. And um, the wood is um, sported swamp ash, and uh, sported means uh, this blue color here. I, it's a biological thing, I have no clue what it's about. And um, it sounds very great, it has a Vega Trem, uh, quite modern construction mm -hmm. from Spain. I really love it. And, uh, so, this is your main guitar? This is uh, one of my main guitars, yeah. yes. So this is the main guitar on stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. so we can see there's a lot of marks already mm -hmm. here, yeah. but it doesn't matter, it's uh, a use, it's just used. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it has um, Gymnasium humbuckers, um, HS pickups, HS3, number two, number four. Um, they were the first stack humbuckers. Mm -hmm. yeah. and it's a low output pickup, but I like the tone from them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for cleaner tones, I can split them so that in the single cone mode, I have a little bit more headroom. And uh, so that you can get them when you play this. Yeah, and then when you go on two more high sounds. So this is one, of course, of my main workhorses. Yes. Yes. Okay, can we switch you now? Yeah, the next one. The next one. That was Strat, I see. Yeah, this is, uh, again, a Strat. Yeah. So, um, to me, there's nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just kidding though, there are tons of good guitars, mm. of course, um, but um, I'm addicted to the Stratocaster. Mm. And uh, so, so whenever I try another guitar, there are so many good guitars. So, so I love old Les Paul, I once had a chance to play a 58 Les Paul. Mm. Of course, that's the holy grail of a Les Paul, and it sounded amazing. It's more like a big fat strap than a Les Paul today. And, um, but, of course, you. I won't bring up a 58 Les Paul to the stage. Of course not. You can buy a house nowadays from <laughs> from these guitars. Yeah. So now um, I'm addicted really to this track. Mm. No? Okay. So no doubt about it. Yeah. No? So so the body I see is also kind of similar to the one yet for. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it looked on the one hand similar because yeah. it, I, I keep it natural, yeah. no? but different as you can see. It's a uh, different wood on the back yeah. as on the top. And uh, so this was created during this unpopular break we had the last three years, and I had some time and uh, I wanted to be creative. Mm -hmm. So um, this body is constructed um, from three different woods. It's um, American pain. Yeah, pain, pine, pine, in the back, walnut in the middle, and uh, um, birds I map on, on, on top. So this, it's a similar way as these Paul guitars are constructed. They have mahogany, and on top they have a, a maple. So this maple wood brings this attack to the Les Paul, and this was an experience. Also, okay, maybe it works, maybe not. Um, because it's always the connection between the neck and the body that makes the guitar sound great or not. Mm. And uh, so every there can tell you something about this. So, so how the lines have to be here on the neck and when you have these lines and then from the distance, what kind of body you have to use. So 
uh, I'm off <laughs> when it comes to these details. Um, but this one, um, it's completely tuned, completely. It's an um, industrial uh, method uh, to, to harden stuff. So like um, iron plates for tanks are even built like this to make them hard. And uh, so uh, what happens with this method is that um, this molecular structure of the wood um, comes to its final point. So whenever you have the chance to play a vintage guitar, a good, often played, worn out vintage guitar, and you see that this one is really played, um, the response from the wood is so amazing. It's just like the tone jumps up of the speaker. And um, so this happens with this 58 Les Paul. Um, I used to have a 63 um, Stratocaster. It was the same, even with the normal single chord, you could have played heavy metal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so um, the idea behind this glue tuning is then to come close to this feeling, mm -hmm. to this uh, resonance from the wood. And for my taste, for my ear, it works. Mm. Yeah. Maybe some people say, oh, no, mm -hmm, it's, it's a more abracadabra, Harry Potter, or whatever. I say, no, it works. Mm. Yeah. And um, so in this guitar, it's scalloped again. Mm. So I scalloped it myself. And uh, 50 style little sounds, handmade pickups. And um, I wanted a guitar with different pickups, mm. just to have yeah. an option, yeah. uh, sound wise. And it's the first time, I think, since more than 20 years that they use real single chords in one yeah. guitar. Yeah. So all the years I had had this um, really uh, humbucking, stacked humbucker pickups. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so they, they have a, a, a different dynamic, uh, they sound different and I wanted this 50 style sound. So I'm going to play here now. Um, <laughs> Accidentally, I just went to the middle pickup, yeah. but uh, it sounds. It's, it's, it's really the stereo and warm vibe in it, and uh, so this is really what I wanted from, yeah. from this guitar. And then, although these are normal single coils, uh, they sound warmer than most industrial single coils, yeah. and has a little bit more power. So the brick pickup at a 7.5 km or something like this. Mm. And so also I can do. <laughs> And um, so it was built before we started recording the new album. Mm. And it turned out that this one was one of the main guitars. So, so, so um, many rhythm guitars are done with this, some yeah. solos were done with this. And it's always when um, I go into the studio, um, every song has a different few free, uh, frequency structure in a way, so um, I'm searching for the guitar that suits the sound or that suits the song. Mm. Uh, and, and then it's, it's always we have a very good co-producer with Rob Bunkers, he's a guitar player himself. And so it's always just to get the optimal sound yeah. just for each song. Mm. Uh, and it turns out this one works very great. Yeah. Oh. So you could have multiple guitars to choose from there. Uh, yeah, it's it's always uh, quite good. So so when you um, go on and, and, and watch um, producers talking about guitar recordings, mm. and uh, um, so there are so many options to do. Anyway, if you record with plugins or amps, this doesn't matter at all. But just different guitars, mm. where to place the guitars. You know, so like on, on the big records like Metallica, they have sometimes eight guitars. Mm. You don't hear it because they are played so tight. Mm. But they are just you know, in, in all the spectrum, you know, so, so they are put to another uh, two different places. And not only one left, one right, mm. yeah, but then sometimes something here, just a little bit more there, maybe some very high guitar, very low volume in the middle. It depends on the song. Yeah, and, uh, so, yeah, so it's always so. Whenever you go into the studio, I would recommend just pick up two or three guitars. Mm. So, so yeah, that's when you have at, at least the most. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so that's one of those main workhorses. So this one here, it's um, the very first series from the Hendrix model. So it's also you can buy nowadays Hendrix models um, from custom shop, I think, from, from, from the US and from the Mexico uh, 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 factory. So this is Fender Mexico. And um, I bought it because of the look. Yeah. I bought it really by internet, mm. which I normally don't do. So, yeah. so whenever I buy a guitar, I have this I have to have this feeling from the gut, okay, that's the one. Mm. So I can walk into a guitar store and say, and maybe have 100, 100 guitars, and I say, uh, okay, that one. Mm. And, and, and this, this suits me. So, yeah. so, so it's really, okay, I pick up this one, okay, that's great. No? Mm. Okay. Hopefully without busting the bank. <laughs> yeah. So um, I bought this one because I wanted a backup guitar for life with a reverse headstock and it turned out um, it's an older buddy. This one has a very big rhythm tone. It's uh, not a good singing solo tone. So um, I tried it live but I um, was forced to use more gain just to get the sound that I hear in my head. Mm. So it turned out that this one uh, is on all the records we have done uh, with Buddy Gera, even on the latest record, this is one of the main rhythm guitars. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's a big, ballsy rhythm sound. <coughs> so, yeah. so when you scroll back in the video and you compared the guitars, I have nothing changed on my pedals, it's just the guitar, so it has um, less uh, gain mm. in its but therefore the tone has more clarity. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And this clarity brings the body to the song, so for the rhythm guitar, it's very cool. Mm. Yeah. And uh, this is a combination of um, um, stack humbuckers, like here, the mouse HS3 has been the final soul strip, and I have an HS2 here which um, this model was used by Eric Johnson in, um, 20 years ago, I think. Um, as he said, it's one of the best sounding uh, um, single coil vintage tones when you uh, uh, wire it as a real single coil. Mm. And um, in the middle I have a true variant um, from the Mazda. It's uh, completely single coil. I have here this. I can split those pickups here and then I can go. This is then always that um, then you have really many options mm. uh, uh, because when you go uh, for a recording in the studio, you never know really exactly what would happen. Mm. So yeah. what kind of sound do you need? Because yeah. there are so many uh, things important, like the speaker, the tubes in the amp, which kind of amp do you have, mm. uh, and uh, the mic, uh, uh, the room itself. How does the room sound? Uh, and so, um, so you know, this was then really built with this um, in mind. Mm -hmm. So I changed the block. It's an American block. I changed all the original electronics. So this one is custom made for me, uh, so, so as I wanted it. And uh, so it turned out a very great guitar. Mm -hmm. yes. Although it's one of the cheapest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, but it's great. What about the, the price? Now yeah, it's it's never about the price. This is so um, because nowadays we have really the high quality guitars in the low budget segment, yeah. uh, and uh, so so and sometimes it's like when you pay like for instance eight hundred euros or maybe three thousand euros, the difference might not be that big as it used to be. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so when you again buy some custom shop guitars, uh, for instance master build. Then you hear the difference for my ears. Yeah, I hear the difference, mm -hmm. but the price is then often, very often, over the top. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. really good. Then we are talking seven or eight grands. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is an okay. You have to have the money. Yeah, yeah. that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and um, one year, the last guitar um, that I used um, on the latest record is this one here. And, um, Candy Upper Red, 
And um, so this one I use for drop tunings. So, so it's, uh, then the, the low E string is uh, drop tuned um, a half step, uh, a whole step, sorry, so that I can this guy. Set in the moment um, because yeah, they, uh, yes, 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 it's no dirt. <laughs> no. It's, um, I'm using power strings and these are the black wires. Yeah. So um, they are just black. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, with the pyramid strings, I used, started using them recently, and um, what I love about them to me. It's just often a kind of taste in a way. Mm -hmm. um, they feel smoother. It's also it's easier to bend in a way. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 maybe I'm just you know, spinning mm -hmm. my mind. I don't know. No, but um, the whole sound is uh, to me more balanced mm -hmm. as with other strings. There are many many different strings outside. Very very good products, of course. And it's all a matter of taste, but to my taste, the pyramid strings just deliver the feel and the tone that I want. And just for the black strings, it just was an experience because uh, we had um, done some videos. As you know, you were yes, know. there. Uh, uh, it was a long day. <laughs> 21 hours, no joke, 21 hours. And um, so um, we just uh, put on the black strings uh, just for optical reasons. Because, okay. and, um, but um, for this guitar, uh, as I was drop tuning and um, uh, on the bridge position, that is Sam uh, um, screaming demon, this is George Lynch pickup, but it's the neck model. Mm. Um, I don't like high gain pickups. And, so, so, and uh, the neck model here, for my ear, it seems better to the other ones. These are um, the Mouser HS4 pickups. It used to be the um, original Indemans and Signature pickup. Mm. And uh, so when Mr. Martin switched to Sema Dunfun, they were then called HS4, not YGM mm. anymore. And uh, so they are both hamburgers. Huh? And uh, so I feel. <laughs> that I want that suits to, for my ear to this pickup. Mm -hmm. now, yeah. I don't like too much power from the pickup because mm -hmm. I have the feeling that then the sound goes a bit dull, that it was too muddy. Mm -hmm. And I like, as I grow up um, with a Stratocaster, mm -hmm. so, so that's uh, um, in my youth, my father used to, uh, uh, to play and to hear all these old records from the shadows and, 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 and that is right also. So mm -hmm. all these clean, Certainly, kind of break up. So, so the amps at the time were really loud. And so a break up a kind of tone, and um, so this tone then I've kept in my ear, mm -hmm. uh, so in, in my head. And then, of course, that's the reason why I play the Stratocaster. Yeah. Uh, it, it was just a cool sound and a cool look. Um, me as a young boy, I didn't know anything about guitars. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. It just looked cool. <laughs> That's the most important part. Of course, of course. You have to look cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah, these are the guitars that I use mainly for the together mm -hmm. on the latest record. I also uh, see a bass here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's then um, from the working process, it's mostly that um, I'm writing the music and when I feel the song is finished. Then I gave it to to Eva, to the, to, to our singer, and uh, then the DJ can um, start creating melodies. Mm -hmm. But for the pre-production, I always play a bass, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly very simple. And um, so that the bass player just can choose what he wants to do. And, uh, that he um, 
can make different baselines. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, that's easy, uh, 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 of course, nowadays, because of all the digital uh, studio equipment, we can just change files, yes. send them over, okay, listen back, say no, not this, we pick this one. Um, uh, but sometimes um, I create baselines which I want like this, uh, especially then when the guitar plays a certain part and uh, the bass plays different notes, mm -hmm. not only the root. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, um, mostly in heavy metal and rock you have very often to do this. Um, um, which is very important, yeah. of course. So, 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 and, uh, so when you play uh, stuff like this, then you are grooving with the drummer. Yeah? Everybody in the venue goes crazy. Mm. That's very, very, very important and that's the biggest part of the bass. Mm. But sometimes um, I'm creating a um, stuff that the guitar has a third a chord and I say, okay, I play a different chord note underneath mm. to create a certain amount of sound. Yeah. And for all of these things for the pre-production, I use this bass. It's um, handmade from Oldenburg. It's created by Burris. It's a <coughs> guitar maker. And um, I always use the neck pick up and uh, uh, many, many options. Five bass switch and uh, active electronics. And um, it has a battery card over here. Yeah, and, uh, but this pick up here, delivers the tone that I love. Uh, I grew up with um, these rock, guitar, uh, um, rock bass players like Bob Dayton, for instance, who used to play for which that was Rainbow, he was the Osborne, mm -hmm. a very creative man, and he's one of those bass players you hear him play. Mm -hmm. yeah. You hear a production and you hear him, okay, that's Bob Dayton. Mm -hmm. With this on the bass, and then you have Billy Sheen, you have Sting, Paul McCartney. Mm -hmm. It's, it's yeah, that's not many. <laughs> not many. No, and so that's the tone I love, and this bass um, delivers the tone. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and it's a small neck, yeah, which suits me quite nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that's then the guitar equipment that I use for the guitar. Oh, that's good. But like, what picks are you using like, to play them? Um, the picks, yeah, the picks. Um, have? No, I have um, the V-picks. Yeah, it's, um, as you can see, the Screamer model. Um, V-Picks are um, handmade officially, but um, I love them. They are um, 2.75 millimeters, nearly 3 millimeters, and I like this feeling from kind of a stone in my hand. I used to play um, all, all kind of picks that we have, and they got heavier and heavier and heavier. And, and then one of my students, I think 10, 15 years ago, it's a kind of nerd. Right? So, so every little detail, hey, I have to take this. And he came up with these as they were not even available in Germany. And um, okay, I buy them. <laughs> they are mine. Mm -hmm. no? So and so the, that's the one I use. Yeah. No? So, so, so that's, that's great. And so I, I love the tone. I love the reaction to the strings. Yeah. So I love heavy picks because you get the response. I pick the string and the response from the string goes really through the hair, through the brain. Mm. When I have a thin pick, the pick starts bending. And you have this bing, mm. and I don't like this. Okay. And this bang, it must be bang. Okay. Right? So mm. that's the control I yeah. have. Yeah. Okay. But of course, folks, it's a kind of taste. Yeah? That's my taste. Of course. It works for me, it must not work for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think that's it for today. Yeah, it's cool, right? Yeah. Yeah, nice talk. Yeah? Yes, exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, the dad. See you. Bye-bye.